Hey everyone, so today we're going to be talking all about fonts. Let's get to it. All right, so first off, fonts are a robust tool for graphic designers. They can communicate so much in your designs. So it's really important to know how fonts communicate. So when you're picking your fonts, they are reinforcing the message behind what you're trying to communicate. So first off, let's talk, start with the basics. We have um, a couple of different types of fonts that I want to go over. First off, we have what's called serif. So serif fonts has these little lines on the edges of all the letters that you can see I've circled right here. And this it makes it easier to read long passages of text. It's often used in books because of this um, and other printed materials. And they are often associated with a more traditional type of look. Moving on to sans serif, sans serif are fonts that don't have lines on the edges of letters. Sans literally means without. So serifs are these little lines. And so sans serif means not those little lines. Um, so these fonts are easier to read on computer screens. And because they came about in the modern era, they come off as looking more modern as well. So script fonts are inspired by handwriting. Um, sometimes they can be a, a little bit difficult to read. And so they're best used for a few words, but definitely not well for long passages. Um, you definitely don't want to put any kind of important information in script either. So usually, you know, especially lately, the trend has been to use script fonts for like wedding invitations, stuff like that, where you want kind of a maybe a romantic type of handwritten feel, but it's not super important to have it, uh, that information be readable. Now, the last type of fonts I'm going to talk about right now are novelty fonts. Some people call them decorative fonts. So there's not really any rules here. These fonts are super fun, but the big drawback with them is that they're trendy. So what looks really cool today um, will look outdated in a couple years. So keep this in mind. You don't want to use this for any type of long term branding work like logos but they can be good for short-term designs like event uh, flyers and stuff like that. So as you can see, there's practical reasons to use different fonts. Um, really quick, let's take a look at this article on what, what fonts were used to design some famous logos. And I think you're going to be pretty surprised that these rules that I've been talking about are used in these logo designs as well. For example, um, you know, there's going to be some more traditional uh, type of brands. And if you think back to what looks more traditional, that's usually the serif fonts. For more modern type of uh, brands, you're going to see that they use sans serif. And we're pretty much not going to see any kind of decorative or novelty fonts in here. So first off, we have Adidas, Avant Garde. And we're going to be seeing, so like this is a little bit more of a fun type of font. Now, I wouldn't call this necessarily decorative because um, we do have some rounded edges and such. It is Pico, but it has been um, changed up a bit specifically for Twitter. So this is something that's done a lot with fonts is that you start with the basic font for logo and then you change up characteristics of it specifically for the logo you're designing. Um, and now we have the infamous Helvetica. So out of all of the fonts we're going to look at on this page, you're going to notice that Helvetica gets used quite a bit. And I'm going to talk about why that is pretty soon. Another Helvetica for Energizer. Okay, so here's our first um, serif font for Stranger Things. Um, and if you know anything about this show, it's set in the 1980s. So it has a little bit more of that traditional look. Now it's not super traditional. The eighties wasn't that long ago, at least in my mind it wasn't, <laughs> but, um, but it does still have that little bit older feel. And that's partially because of the serifs on the font. All right. Now this is, you know, classic traditional font usage right here. Um, very, a serify font and even within the logo it says since 1761 so they're trying to impart this feeling of having this tradition right 
All right. You can see that it, all of these rules are really holding true as I'm scrolling through all of these different fonts. And of course, if you want to take your time and look at these a little bit more, um, I have the link in the lecture for you. Look at, there's another Helvetica. <laughs> Gotham has been pretty uh, popular, but you can see that it is pretty close to Helvetica. It's a little thinner, but close. And this is another one that gets used quite a bit. Ariel, it's close to Helvetica, but it does have a little bit more of a rounded shape to it. Gotham again for TikTok. And you guys are going to be seeing this one. I'm not even sure how to pronounce it. Seguo, 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 <laughs> quite a bit more. This one is being replaced as the default font in Microsoft Word. Before it was Calibri, it's going to be this one pretty soon. And even the classic Star Wars is uh, a modified version of Helvetica. Now, this is probably the only um, script type of font that we'll see on this whole page. And uh, as you can see, Futura has been thrown on a couple times. Trajan Pro has been really popular for the last 10 years. All right. So, like I said, this really reinforces um, what I was talking about. So if you're out there making logos for people, you don't necessarily need to find the most crazy looking, looking font. In fact, you don't want to do that. It's not going to stand the test of time how a logo should. All right, let's get back to the lecture. So I want to go over a few fonts that you absolutely must know. And this is really because of their cultural significance. So this meme is actually making fun of these fonts. So Comic Sans and Papyrus were some of the first fonts that were readily available on all computers back in the 90s. Um, and because of this, they got used so much from anything you could think of. Everyone was using Comic Sans or Papyrus. Um, Comic Sans was created intentionally to have more of a kid's appeal to be used for kids type of items. Papyrus was used intentionally or was created intentionally with the idea of being an ancient type of writing. Um, but like I said, because of their overuse, they've kind of become a joke in the graphic design world. So things like this, this meme right here, Comic Sans plus Papyrus, the two sexiest fonts ever made a baby just for you comic papyrus that's why this is so funny um this is playing on the fact that graphic designers kind of have come to dislike these two fonts quite a bit so now you guys know a little bit more about those um you'll start to see them more and more any type of branding that has to do with earthiness or hippie-ish type of stuff um organic type of feelings people will kind of go to papyrus right away. So look out for those in your everyday life. You're going to start noticing them a lot more and you'll probably start noticing uh, the memes that make fun of them a lot more too. Now this is um, all about Helvetica and Helvetica is uh, was created specifically to be very clear and to not have an emotional attachment to the font. So you're going to see this being used all the time for signage especially in airports um the national park service this is their brand font um yeah you're gonna see it everywhere so pay attention to helvetica it has a lot of great uses but there's been a bit of pushback too on how much it's used as well and if you're thinking what do i care about all of these old fonts well you're actually living in font uh history right now because impact is the uh, meme font basically it is used for almost every meme out there and pretty soon it's going to end up being a nostalgia thing <laughs> so um, you're one of these days you're going to be telling uh, your younger people that i remember the day when impact was used for everything and all this <laughs> all right so now let's talk a little bit about the psychology of fonts so what do you guys think do some fonts make you feel or think differently? 
how can you use that information to communicate in your designs? So font psychology is the study of how different fonts impact our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. So this is a quick quote. Well, I guess it's not that quick from um, a blog post by Envato Tuts called The Psychology of Fonts. Images are not simply colors and shapes on a page, or at least not for humans. Human beings have an innate instinct to anthropomorphize non-human entities. Applying human characteristics and emotions to things that are distinctly non-human, such as logos, for example. Because human beings respond to visual culture in an emotional way, designers can manipulate the psych psychological responses of their viewers by making informed choices about the features of a design, such as colors and fonts. Applying the psychology of fonts in marketing is starting to become an important field of research and practice in branding and and advertising. All right, so let's take a quick look at this infographic on the psychology of fonts. So you can see that this kind of goes along with what we've already been talking. We have the serif, which the psychology behind that is stable, established, formal, like I said earlier, traditional. Um, on the other side, let's scroll down a little bit here, we have modern. And now this is a sans serif font right here. Chic, futuristic, elegant. Uh, another sans serif here, progressive, informal, open. Script, we have creative, fun, amusing. <clears throat> so if you want to know, well, not if you want, <laughs> when you're done with this video, I should say, um, you want to find out which fonts communicate emotions, such as power, friendliness, fun, um, take a few minutes to read this blog post from the Psychology of Fonts by Envato Tets. It is really, will open your eyes to how much fonts really matter in your designs and what they can do. Picking the wrong, the wrong or the right font can really make or break your design. So definitely pay attention to this article and read it carefully. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lecture on fonts. It's a whole big world to really get into and I'm happy to be the one to introduce it to you.